News in the world of Bellwright. Let's go. It's finally here. The Bellwright release date, April 23rd. Coming up in under two weeks. That's 12 days for those of you out there counting. Donkey Crew has been bombarded with requests for when the game is coming out for early access since our creator playtest happened a little over a week ago. They got a lot of feedback on the playtest and they found some things that they wanted to adjust because they wanted to make sure that the launch into early access goes really smoothly and that players have a very good first impression experience with the game. And that's totally understandable. I appreciate it. As one of the devs, Arjun Travis had mentioned, the expectations for early access launches are not the same as they used to be. I think that Valheim has made a big difference in this with the success that they had in their early access launch. And there kind of seems to be like a Valheim standard now about the level of playability and how finished the game feels even though it's not finished. And we've seen games even recently go into early access when they didn't feel finished enough and get slammed in the initial reviews. So it's understandable that they would wanna try and smooth off some rough edges, even though it is still early access, people. But they've been working on a lot of bug smashing since the playtest and optimizing the user experience. That's definitely based on what they saw in the streams and videos from the creator playtest, including the comments that were sent to them from viewers. They actually had a dev assigned to every one of us creators that got early access so that someone watched every single minute of every stream and video that was put out from that playtest. That's commitment. So what have they been working on optimizing? One thing for sure that they've been working on is combat. There were some tweaks that needed to be made in combat regarding how far away some of the mobs were when they were able to attack you. I saw some around the speed of some of your attacks, how some of the blocking worked with the shield, especially in relation to wolves. So we'll see what kind of optimizations and changes they've made there. One thing that some people had a challenge with, and it took me a beat to get my brain wrapped around this style too, is in that a lot of survival games, you're the one that's like running in there to fight, even if you have somebody with you. And in Bellwright, it's a much more, or there's more options and ways of how to do combat than just you being the primary person fighting. And so part of that balance in how easy or hard you want the combat to be will depend on and recognizing that you can use different styles, such as sending your villagers in ahead of you and you hanging back and not being on the front line. They looked at the food system and are looking at adding different types of effects for things and maybe clarifying the way that you find out what the effects are. Interesting little side note, one of the devs said that one of the things they'd like to add into the game is a way for particular villagers that you have to develop a preference for a certain food and get more buffs when you give them that food and that you find out, oh, they like that, that's their favorite. That's not gonna be there right now. I'm just saying, that's an idea for the future that I thought was really cool. They got a lot of feedback about the UI and UX and seeing where things are, being able to recognize where things are while you're playing through the game. I had a little bit of experience with this too. There were some things that were unclear. And so they've talked quite a bit about cleaning that up and making it more clear. I think part of that as well is maybe adding a bit more tutorial information in along here and there at spots where people got confused and didn't know what to do next or didn't know how to do something. And then there are also some places where they noticed where a significant number of people we're having issues in the world. Like, for example, one of the big ones was your initial quest, you have to find flax that went to the north side of the village to find flax and looked around forever. And it took me a long time to realize there was no flax there. I had to go to the south side and chat actually helped me in stream. <laughs> Figuring out, go down here. They're like looking at dis Discord and Reddit and trying to figure it out and everything. I eventually found it, it does exist. But recognizing that issue, like, so it was a way to polish up some things like that. For example, with the flax, they've done a couple things, including looking at how it's randomly spawned in the world. 
so that it's distributed in a more useful way. So there'll be some times where it's still very spread out, but there'll be some times when it's more clumped up and you'll be able to find it in more areas that you need it. They've changed the look of it as well. This is what a field with flax used to look like. You can see these light purple flowers are the flax and this is the sage. And this is what you might find a clump of flowers looking like now. So you can see the flowers are a little bit brighter colors. They're a little bit easier to recognize. Hey, there's pickable flowers right over there. So they're easier to see and find. Another thing that they've done with the early game progression so that people don't get frustrated when they're first starting is that they've moved the game start time a few hours earlier. Because when people first get there, a lot of times they look around and wander and discover and everything. And it takes them a bit longer than the devs were expecting to like get to the first mission and get going. And so then if it ends up being nighttime when you're looking for your first resource, that can be a bit more challenging. So they're giving us a bit more daylight to get going. And so that's an example of some really specific fine tuning that they've been doing to improve the overall quality of the game and the experience of the player. They want people to have a positive experience, especially when you first get in the game. So bottom line is they've been working their high knees off to improve the game over the last, whatever, week and a half. And we can celebrate release day on April 23rd. The next question is gonna be how much will it cost? We can't know for sure because there are rules and negotiations going on behind the scenes and Steam won't let early access games put a price out there. But typically you can expect it to be the cost of an average early access game, not like a little individual college player price game of $2.99 and not 80 bucks like a big AAA game. Somewhere in the middle, some of the guesses I've seen are between $20 and $30 and some hints that that's probably in the right range. I'll be covering Bellwright with guides and news and I'll be right there on the 23rd checking it all out. I think this game has a lot of potential and it's very distinct and unique in some ways that I think really can captivate players. I know I'm excited to get back into it. I've been missing playing it ever since the play test. So free subscribe for more Bell Right. Until next time, happy gaming.